If you do all the hard work to get a client to actually go on your site and look at a project, but then the project page is awful, what does it even matter? Why does it even matter that your client is there to begin with? If you can't get a good project page to show off your work, then everything is for nothing. In this video, we're gonna go over three of the best project pages that I've seen out there in the wild, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to build a very, very simple version of that using Webflow. Let's get started. So the first one here is gonna be plasticbionic.com. And these guys have a very, very simple portfolio page. This is an agency, but if you go ahead and click into the first project here, we'll see that the initial image stays there while you're loading and then it loads in a new header image. And this image is then excellent quality. And as we start to scroll, you'll see that there is a neat interaction here. As we scroll, we get a scroll bar from the left side to the right side to explain how far down you are in the project. And it also, when you reach the end, it takes you on to the next project. Just like this. But for now, let's actually focus on the project page itself. So we see that there is image after image after image, just explaining the project in the best possible quality, just having the images themselves talk for the project instead of having a ton of different text boxes and a ton of different explanations. We're letting the images and the actual work do all of the talking, which is amazing. Next up is gonna be Dash Digital Studio. So if I click on this one here, just like I could have clicked on any of them, we'll see that there is a similar layout to the previous one that we just saw now. Granted, there is that subtle animation of the text coming up and the images growing and, on, and all of that, but there's a very simple and repetitive message that we see across the three sites that we're gonna showcase here. So first things first here, we've got the title of the project, then a massive header image, a short description, some text explaining the challenge, the solution, and then here we have more images and more images and more images. And granted, there is a few text boxes along the way that explains the project, the user experience that we see in this project specifically. Then we also have a sticky here on the left side with a design system explaining everything that went into the design system. And then this is just amazing. We have the entirety of the project explaining the entire user flow, how it went from the first to the last step, which is great for a client when you're looking to hire someone and you can see the entire process that's extremely, extremely valuable. So this is a similar story as we keep scrolling down. It's just text on the left, text on the right, image on the bottom, and then there's a very simple drag here. Images just continuously going one after the other. And then on the bottom, we have related projects that you can then click into. But for now, we will just move on to the next one here. So the next one is coleanddan.com. So if I go into the work here, we'll see that there is, again, very, very similar layout here between the last two that we just saw and the current one that we are going to click on here. Now, one thing to know of this site is that it is quite slow. So keep that one in mind when you are looking at it. And again, all the links to everything I'm gonna talk about is always in the description. So go ahead and check those out. But we can see that the first thing we see here is apart from this video that's playing right now or autoplays, we see that there is text, 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 and then more images, more images, more images. So as you scroll down, we see that these are just very simple GIFs and we can add these to our Webflow site or to any sort of site that we're using, including Framer or WordPress or anything that you're using just to make your site that little bit more interactive and intuitive to use. If you guys are impressed by these type of sites with how clean they are, how simple they are to use and how much information that you can convey with these simple elements, then stay tuned for the next part where we're gonna take a look at all of these sites and build them out in a very simple way in Webflow. Let's get into it. Okay, so here we have a blank slate in Webflow. Now I'm just going to take this tab and add it to here so we can just have this as the top three tabs and then our inspiration is there. Okay, so let's get started here. So the first thing that we need to do is obviously going to be to add a massive header image or video as all of these have that simple, big, very good quality image. I mean, this one has text on top, but we'll just, we'll move that aside. So for now, we're just gonna add a massive image and I'm gonna start by just adding a section. And inside that, I'm gonna add an image. And within that image, we're then gonna make it 100 viewport width. So we can see that's taking up all of the screen. And then for height, we can just do around maybe 50 viewport height, something like that. And so here, I'm just gonna pick a image that I have here. I'm gonna change the fill to be cover so that it spans the entire width, but it doesn't actually distort it. We're gonna add a div here so that we can make a wrapper. So this can be our wrapping for the entirety of the page and we can make something like maybe 5% and we can do the same thing here and then here as well. Okay, so then we can then add this section inside of the wrapper and we'll see that it will change the padding of the entire wrapper and I think 5% is a little extreme. So we can maybe make that like 1%. Okay, so now we've got this very simple header image and that kind of spans the entirety of the block. We can make 
maybe make that around 90 or 80 or so looks good to me. And then the next thing that we need to do is going to be add this text here. So this is, I think the most important part because learning how to do these text boxes where you have something on the left, something on the right, then image left, right, all that kind of abstract layout allows you to create creative layouts that other people might not have, which will make you stand out from the crowd, which again is the ultimate goal here. So let's go ahead and add a section here. And we could do this inside of the previous section, but I think it's also fine just to add another one. And we're gonna add padding here of maybe two viewport height, something like that. And then I'm gonna add a grid inside of here. Click on the edit button again, add a third column, delete these rows. And inside of here, we can then add our text. So for example, here we've got pixel six, Google pixel six. So maybe heading one can be my awesome YouTube project. Okay, great. And then inside of here, we can do a text block and I'm just gonna copy paste that. So let me go ahead and add some lorem ipsum here so we can see what we're working with and we can move this all the way to the top. So now we've got a header image and then text on the left, middle and right. And if we go ahead and check the mobile, we can see that this is obviously not scaling properly, but using grids allows us to do something very, very simple, which would be to simply remove a column and we can then stretch this out to the right side. And we can see that we now have text on the left, right, and then one on the bottom. And then we can do a very similar thing for mobile. Go ahead and remove the second column and then we can then make this the whole entire of the width and because our wrapper is containing all of the information and all of the actual work that we're adding here when we go into the lower breakpoints it's really easy to change that all we have to do is change the padding here to maybe two percent still looks good to me something like that and now we see that this is super simple to do in desktop in horizontal mobile, in mobile, and it only took us about one to two minutes. I'm not even sure how long that took, but the beauty of this is then we can then add another section to the bottom and we can just start adding and adding and adding onto this to make a really great portfolio that is very similar to this. If you see the differences between the one I built and the special one here on the right. The only difference would be, first of all, the project, the font that they used, the sizing and all of that. But in terms of layout, it's quite, quite similar. If we wanted to add a second image here, just to have those two columns of images, it would be very similar to what we did here for the grid. All we have to do is delete one of these rows. And we go and go ahead and paste this image inside of here, delete that one. And we can now see that we have two individual columns of images, one on the bottom, and it just keeps going for as long as we need to. So obviously this this does look a little bit funk. So what we can do is add maybe five viewport height to the top, to the bottom, maybe a little bit more, something like that. And we can see what that looks like now. So if you guys did enjoy this video, if you found it useful, valuable, any of those key words, then please do let me know down below, like, subscribe, comment, do all those things. And also share this video with anyone that you think might need a better portfolio layout, just like this one here. I'll leave the links to everything in the description if you guys wanna check those out. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.